This from Politico is pretty, pretty damning. Let me quote. The super PAC supporting Tim Scott's presidential bid is canceling most of its remaining TV spending, reversing course after reserving $40 million in ads for him ahead of the Iowa caucuses. The retreat from TV is the latest sign of how dire the primary has become for a candidate who once anticipated outside help from big donors, but who is now polling in low single digits and hasn't yet qualified for the third debate. Now, at first glance, you might think something like, this is bad for Tim Scott. And honestly, you're right, it is bad for Tim Scott. But upon further inspection, what the pullback by Scott's super PAC really tells us is something very important about the broader Republican race. Here's how Scott's super PAC boss explained the move again, this is according to Politico. We are doing what would be obvious in the business world, but will mystify politicos. We aren't going to waste our money when the electorate isn't focused or ready for a Trump alternative, wrote Rob Collins, co-chair of the super PAC, who said that the quote, never Trump field is going to be quote, wasting money this fall, trying to undermine Trump's current lead. This electorate is locked up and money spent on mass media isn't going to change minds until we get a lot closer to voting, Collins added, which nicely puts the reality of the Republican race in focus. GOP voters are overwhelmingly choosing Donald Trump as their nominee and have shown little to no inclination to search for an alternative candidate to the former president. Spending money then trying to persuade voters who don't want to be persuaded is a fool's errand. We've heard this tune before. In fact, we heard it less than a month ago when the Club for Growth, which is a conservative outside group seeking to influence the 2024 election, admitted that its millions of dollars in TV ad spending against Trump had been for naught. Wrote Club for Growth President David McIntosh in a memo he sent to donors on the ad spending this. Even when you show video to Republican primary voters with complete context of President Trump saying something otherwise objectionable to primary voters, they find a way to rationalize and dismiss it. Every traditional post-production ad attacking President Trump either backfired or produced no impact on his ballot support and favorability. This includes ads that primarily feature video of him saying liberal or stupid comments from his own mouth. And if that all rings a bell, it's because of this, as reported in The New Yorker by Benjamin Wallace Wells on Ron DeSantis's campaign's frustrations with finding a Trump attack that actually works. Let me quote. Even attaching Trump's name to an otherwise effective message had a tendency to invert the results, this source said. If a moderator said that the COVID lockdowns destroyed small businesses and facilitated the largest upward wealth transfer in modern American history, 70% of the Republicans surveyed would agree. But if the moderator said that Trump's COVID lockdowns destroyed small businesses and facilitated the largest upward wealth transfer in modern American history, the source said 70% would disagree. Now you add to all of that this fact. The candidates in the GOP field who have taken on Trump most directly and repeatedly, that's Chris Christie and Mike Pence, have suffered for it. They are currently reviled within the party. Base. The current reality of the Republican race goes like this. A majority of voters have made their minds up about Donald Trump. They are going to vote for him. They have zero interest in hearing criticism of him from other Republicans. And they are absolutely disinclined to believe any criticism that they do hear of him. Now that would be an issue if Trump was leading the race by say 10 points. It's a massive problem when Trump is leading the race nationally in every early state by somewhere between 30 and 40. Points. The only way to narrow that gap is to attack the front runner to try to slow his momentum. But Republican voters, again, don't A, want to see Trump attacked or B, believe the attacks made on Trump. Now, if you believe the Tim Scott super PAC memo, this is only a temporary condition. As Rob Collins writes, this electorate is locked up and money spent on mass media isn't going to change minds until we get a lot closer to voting, which of course, suggest that once the caucuses and primaries are actually closer, maybe early next year, voters will start to look around for Trump alternatives and that Scott and his well-heeled super PAC will be ready and waiting, which, uh, no. This is the definition of wishful thinking. Ask yourself this, what could Republican voters find out now about Donald Trump that would make them question their long-standing support for him. To answer that question, I'll refer you to a quote from none other than Donald Trump. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. Yes, yes it is. Now there have been predictions for years now by everyone from Mitch McConnell to Joe Biden that Republicans would wake up from this Trump fever dream at some point and start acting normal 
again. And every one of those predictions has been proven dead wrong. So what? I see no reason that sometime between now and January, there will be any significant appetite for a Trump alternative in this Republican presidential race. None.